for more on this. <laughs> Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com and a Fox News contributor. Bernard Whitman is a former Bill Clinton pollster and CEO of Whitman Insight Strategies. Welcome uh, to both of you. Hi, see you, Martha. Guy, you were shaking your head. Uh, it's amazing that this obscure, obsolete law is still on the books at that Bill Clinton who has earned reportedly nine figures in speaking fees alone since leaving office, is exploiting this law to the tune of a million dollars of taxpayer oh, money cool. to rent an office in Harlem. What do we know? Come on, like, you know, every, every single, every single president gets the same million dollars. And in fact, for the last eight years, they he hasn't even used the money entirely. He's returned it back to the federal government. Every single president does the same. All these presidents have been pretty in pretty good financial stead. Why don't you ask W to give back the money as yeah. well? No, yes, let's do that. In okay. fact, let's do means testing. If you're a millionaire, after you. you leave office, leave taxpayers alone and don't take the million dollars. I think people it's just ridiculous. get so used to being in public service that they just think, you know, it, okay, of course I get the million dollars. I'm sure Why Bill Clinton would have dollars? paid his rent had he been asked. Okay, let's move on uh, to the foundation question um, and whether or not they need to separate it and separate it now. Or not. You know, I actually think that it would do the campaign well to accelerate the separation. There's no question when Hillary Clinton is president, uh, there's going to be a separation. I think that separation could be accelerated. And it's a shame because the Clinton Foundation has done an extraordinary amount of good. It's driven down the cost of HIV and AIDS drugs by 90 percent. Half of adults, three quarters of children get their HIV medicine in the world today from that foundation. But it's time for this to have a complete separation. And I think it's serving as a distraction to campaign right well, now. There are a lot of uh, Democrats like yourself who are calling for that. So we'll see if they listen to it. Um, I want to move on to the immigration speech, the Donald Trump immigration speech, during which he made this sort of offhand comment, and I'll get your thoughts on it. Let's listen. Within ICE, I am going to create a new special deportation task force focused on identifying and quickly removing the most dangerous criminal illegal immigrants in America who have evaded justice, just like Hillary Clinton has evaded justice, okay? Maybe they'll be able to deport her. Guy? I mean, it's a silly, stupid joke. No one takes that ad lib one liner seriously. He's not going to deport Hillary Clinton. But I have had issues with Donald Trump's immigration policies, yes, which have. they seem to be a moving target still. But I really do think it is smart and reasonable to focus most, not necessarily exclusively, um, but most earnestly on finding illegal immigrants who have not only come here in violation of our laws, but then broken the law again and committed felonies. That's what he's talking about. That's the focus we heard from Governor Brewer early yeah. in this show in the interview. I think that's why. Absolutely. But I mean, what strikes me in all of this, Bernard, is, you know, you constantly hear how, you know, sort of unhinged Donald Trump is and that the stuff that he's throwing out there is so hurtful to you know, some to these communities, to Hispanics and, and other communities. But then you go back to the fact that what, what he really underlined, he's not calling for any new laws. He's, he's just calling for us Hold to, on, to pay attention to the laws that are actually on he's, the books. No, so what's not, wrong with that? That's not true. He's, look, that trip to Mexico and the subsequent speech showed him to be a liar, a fraud, and basically a I fascist. So. Because he said, oh, <laughs> we didn't discuss who's going to pay for the wall. Complete lie. Total coward for not saying he got played by the Mexican president. And then to How say so? things like to say things like we're going to have an ideological screen, we're going to have a Did financial you, success screen. Hold on. Whoa, These whoa, whoa, are whoa, whoa, fundamentally un-American. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold me. So, so when you go back to that meeting, right? Do you think it would be wise in the first meeting for a presidential candidate to do anything other than accept graciously the invitation, show up, begin the process of, of, be, of building a relationship? Clearly, there's been tensions there. Uh, you don't walk into that meeting and say, Buddy, you're going to build the wall but and, and pay for it. he said it didn't come up, and it did. The, the president said you're not going to pay for it. Trump could have said we agree to disagree. He is a liar. That guy, uh, one last thought. I mean, look, both candidates in this race have had trouble with the truth, and I think when you look at the new Fox News poll, Hillary Clinton's numbers are in the tank on truthfulness because that is someone who cannot stop lying. She's an inventor. I think liar. Democrats are testy because uh, so yeah. many people who don't even like Donald Trump are saying that it was a brilliant move. I think that's why the Democrats trip, the trip went look at his well. Three quarters of Americans disagree with his plan, including two thirds of Republicans. He's completely out of step with everybody yeah. except for his own ego. The trip went well, and that's why you're testy. No, the trip was a complete failure and a total disaster. We'll see. You know, the voters will decide. We'll see what happens in the polls. Uh, thanks, you guys. Good to see you both. Thank you. Good panel.